Okay, uh, in this video, we want to take some time and kind of review the procedure that we went through previously on how we uh, devise our formula for handling combination problems when there's repeats involved. And the reason for doing that is we want to make certain we're comfortable with it because in the next video, we're going to consider the same identical problem only from the approach of using generating functions to solve it, which turns out to be a much more powerful approach. But for now, let's just take a brief review as to what we had covered in, in some of the previous videos. And the problem that we had considered before was, suppose that, um, say we had six crates of candy, and each one has hundreds of candy in them, and they all have, in each crate, they have an identical flavor. So this might be cinnamon, this might be peach, uh, vanilla, and so forth. So we have six crates of candy, and we've got six different flavors to choose from. And we're allowed to select ten pieces of candy out of the six crates. And the question we want to answer is, how many ways can we do that? Obviously, when we make our selections, the order in which we make them is irrelevant. So the way we had considered the problem before was, we said, well, let's imagine that we have six empty boxes. And say, for example, that uh, we decided we were going to take three pieces of candy from the first grade. So we put them into the first box. And out of this crate, which has hundreds of pieces of candy, we select only one. So we put that in the second box. And the third crate, um, we don't take any, so we leave that box empty. From the fourth crate, we take two pieces of candy. The fifth crate, again, we don't take any, so we leave the fifth box empty. And from the sixth crate, we remove four pieces of candy. We put that into the sixth box. Now, this um, situation can be diagrammed schematically. Instead of having the boxes, we can represent that just with five vertical lines. So we'd have box one with three pieces of candy, box two with one candy, box three is empty, box four has two pieces of candy, box five is empty, and box six has the four pieces of candy. And we're representing them all the pieces of candy with identical X's because we're not giving any preferences. We're not saying, well, we'd like to have more cinnamon than we had um, of vanilla, for example. There's no preference given in the selection, so that's why we can treat them all as if they're identical. Now, what's interesting, though, if we look at the problem from this point of view, we would say, well, here then we have 10 identical objects, the 10 X's. And we also have five identical objects, the five vertical lines. How many ways can we promote these X's and these vertical lines? For example, we could have this kind of a permutation. Now, this permutation would correspond then to taking, removing two pieces of candy from the first crate, put into the first box, removing two pieces of candy from the second crate and putting into the second box, removing one piece of candy from the third crate and putting into the third box, removing one piece of candy from the fourth crate and putting it into the fourth box, removing two pieces of candy from the fifth crate and putting into the fifth box, and removing two pieces of candy from the sixth crate and putting it into the sixth box. So the total number of ways that we can permute these X's and these vertical lines is exactly equivalent to the number of ways that we can select 10 pieces of candy from these six different crates. And from our past videos, we know how to do that. Um, here we have a permutation problem with repeats. There are 10 identical X's and 5 identical vertical lines. Now, our vertical lines, 
there are five of them and the x's there are ten of them. Now the number of objects or the number of flavors that we had to choose from was for our problem six. Usually the number of objects that we are that we have to choose from is denoted by n. In this problem n just happens to be six and the number of selections that we're going to take from these objects or in this case the number of um, pieces of candy that we're going to select from the six different flavors that's ten usually the number of selections that we're making is denoted by the variable k. Now so the permutation formula the total number of objects that we have here we have ten x's that's our selections or in general we would say there are k of them there are six minus one vertical lines six is the number of objects you have to choose from in general that's denoted by n so there are n minus one so the number of objects that we have total is k plus n minus one and then the formula is for the permutations that you can have with these repeats is the total number of objects that factorial divided by the number the factorial of the number of repeats for each object. Here we have ten identical x's or the ten corresponds in general to k so that would be k factorial. We have six minus one vertical lines or in general that would be n minus one. That would be the number of these vertical lines here and it's n minus one factorial. It's the factorial of the number of repeats. And again we've covered this in past videos. What this means then is that for our problem we have found out then that the number of ways that we can select select ten candies from say from six flavors is n plus k minus one factorial divided by k factorial times n minus one factorial. So for our problem where this is six and this is ten, this would be fifteen factorial divided by ten factorial times five factorial. Go ahead and do the arithmetic and that will tell you then the number of ways that we can select ten pieces of candy from these six different crates. And we also noted before in the past videos that this expression right here we could also write as or as these and these are the same and they both give us the same expression. Okay, so again we had covered this in previous videos but we wanted to um, uh, to do it again because we're going to go through the same problem in the next video or now we're going to approach it from the viewpoint of generating functions and that's going to lead us into more difficult problems but for a lot of those difficult problems we're going to come back and at least do the initial interpretation the same way that we set up this problem here so we'll probably be referring back to this problem uh, on a number of different occasions but now when we do the generating functions and we develop that background then we can consider these types of problems that are a lot more difficult. For example, suppose that we could select say 20 pieces of candy but we had to 
select at least three pieces of candy from the fourth crate and say from the first crate we always had to select uh, an even number of candies and maybe from the fifth crate we could only select a total of four pieces of candy. Now how many combinations would you have? That would sound like it would be a horrendously difficult problem to approach but when we use generating functions we can handle it quite easily. So that's what we're going to consider um, in the next videos. Incidentally, if you just um, found us on YouTube, if you can go to the website at digital-university.org, all the videos that we have for the combination of permutation problems and probability uh, problems, you'll find them on the website there where they're all presented for you in their proper order. Um, okay, anyway, that's it for this video. Come back, join us in the next video, and let's talk about generating functions some more.